Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Simona Namart, or Sam for short. In this tutorial, we're going to make this. Let's get right into it. Okay, so this is what we're going to make. So this is where we start. As always, we can delete this default cube by pressing delete or X. Down here in the corner, you can see what we are working towards. This is like the reference for what we are doing. This is how the bar stool is going to look in the end. First, we want to make this part at the top where you sit on. So that's just a cylinder. So shift A, mesh cylinder. Then you want to scale it down on the Z axis. So S, Z to about there. And then I want to go into front view and then move it up. Then I want to add a few modifiers. So first of all, I'm going to go to the modifier tab, add modifier and then bevel. Then I want to change a few things. First of all, I want to change the limit method to angle and I'm going to leave the angle as it is. And then we can leave the rest of the settings. Then I want to add another modifier, the subturf modifier, which we usually use. But I still want the sides to be straight and make a crease at the top. So I'm going to edit mode and then add an edge loop with control R and slide it up to the top, well, almost to the top, and then another one at the bottom. There we go. That looks good. This is how the top of the chair looks. So I want to make a leather texture, and then I also want to insert these crisscrossing lines, which makes it look like that generic leather that they use for chairs. So to do that, we're going to edit mode with the tab, into top view and then just make sure you're in vertex select mode up here at the top and then we're going to use a new tool called knife which will enable us to connect vertices and create new edges so press k to enable the tool then i want to connect this top vertex with the bottom one that's adjacent to it Make sure it snaps onto the vertex and then just drag it down to the one across from it. Then press enter. Then you want to do the same on the other side, over here. Enter. And then you want to do the same thing horizontally across. So OK. Drag it across. Enter. And one last time. There we go. Now what you want to do is grab each of these faces and then insert them and then extrude them upwards so that they will form those different bumps. So going to face select mode and we can't select all of them at the same time. So we're going to have to do alternating blocks. So I'll select these four in the corners and the center one. And then if you press period and individual origins, they will each be inset on their own and not to the middle of all of them. Then press I to inset them just a bit. Go into front view and then move it up with GZ. Just a little bit. Then I want to do it with the remaining squares. Inset. And then move it up with GZ. There we go. If you now go out of edit mode, you can see that these squares look pretty good. Now if we just add one more subdivision to the subserve modifier, it looks good to me. Later on, we are going to add the leather material to it. But for now, we're going to make the bottom of the chair first. So add a cylinder, shift A, mesh, cylinder. Then I want to scale it on all of the axes except the Z axis. So S for scale and then shift Z like that and then move it up. Then I want to scale it a bit on the Z axis and then just make it press into the top of the chair a little bit. Then I want to go into edit mode and go to vertex select again. Then I want to select this bottom ring by clicking on one of the vertices, then pressing Alt and then selecting it. Then I want to extrude it down, E, Z, and then scale it. 
so that it spreads out like that until it's about the same width as the top of the chair and then I want to extrude it once more but just a little bit and directly down this time just like that then we can go out of edit mode and that part is finished then we want to make this thing that you usually put your feet on at the bottom so to do that we want to add another cylinder so shift a mesh cylinder and then once again we scale it on all of the axes except the z-axis so s shift z until it's even thinner than the chair's bottom then i want to rotate it 90 degrees so r 90 until it's horizontal and then i want to go into top view and then add a modifier to it which is called the mirror modifier and then make sure you are mirroring it on the z-axis and not the x-axis then we can go into edit mode and move it to the left until they are not touching then we want to enable clipping and then move them until they are touching and then if you move them out again you will see that they are stuck together which is what we want then you want to move this part at the front upwards so, so that it makes an angle so go into wireframe mode with z wireframe and then just drag and select that part and then move it up with g y just like that and then we can move this part in a bit then i want to extrude and rotate it until they meet up again on this side so extrude move it and rotate it then once again extrude move and rotate all the way until they meet then we can go out of edit mode and out of wireframe mode then add a subdivision surface modifier to it and then we also want to enable smooth shading so right click and click shade smooth and we can apply the mirror modifier and then we want to move this to the chair so go into side view and then move it into the chair so that it goes right through it then you can just scale it if it's too big or too small then I want to make this lever at the top which enables you to move the chair up and down so we're going to add another cylinder shift a mesh cylinder and then scale it on all of the axes except the z-axis again so s z and this time i want to make it really thin so i'll just move it forward and then scale it until it's thin like that and then i want to scale it down on the z-axis too then we can go into front view and move it up to here and then and then rotate it to about 45 degrees and move it into that little corner and then we just want to move it to the bottom of the chair like that now i want to make this plastic lever so that's really easy all you need to do is add a cube so shift a mesh cube and i'm just going to move it to the side here then you want to go into edit mode and wireframe mode and then every time you select one of these vertices you have to drag and select it to select both at the same time so these top two we want to scale in like that and then we want to add a loop cut through the middle here so control r add the loop cut and then I want to drag these two vertices out on the z-axis then we want to scale the whole thing in on the y-axis and then add a subdivision surface modifier to it I'm going to add two subdivisions 
and then we want to make sure that the sides are flat and not rounded in like this. So we select both of the faces and then press I and then left click and do the same on the other side. Okay, and we can go out of edit mode and then move it to the chair. So go into top view, rotate it 90 degrees and then move it to the left, scale it down, rotate it and move it onto that lever. And there we go, that's the modeling finished. Now we can add some materials. The textures I use are from Polygon. So just go to polygon.com and click on textures. Then we can scroll down to free. And the ones I'm going to use are first of all this stone marble. You can just download all of them or the diffuse, glass and normal. Then I'm also going to use a wood flooring. I see the one that I used is not here, so you can just use this wood flooring 044, which will also look really good. Just download the diffuse, glass and normal. Don't worry if the one that I'm using in the tutorial looks different, you'll have the same result. Then the last texture we are going to use is this leather texture over here. We're going to use the bump map, diffuse variation 2 glass and normal or you can just download everything so we can drag this out a bit more and then change this to shader editor and then I want to make a metal material for this bottom part so go to the materials tab click on new and I want to name this metal Then we can scroll in here and turn the metallic up to 100%. And then we can go into rendered view with said rendered. And just make sure you're in cycles render engine right here. And your lamp might be a little weak. So just change it to a sun lamp. And then I put my strength on 2. So now we just want to change the color of this metal. So I'm going to make it a little bit more grey and I'm going to make the roughness a lot less. I'm dragging it down to about 0.141 and then I also want to drag the specular up to 1. And then I want to use the same material for this bottom part. So go to the materials tab and then go to this drop down and select your material. And the same for this top cylinder here. Then I want to make a new material for the plastic lever. So click new. And then I'm going to make it a black color, almost completely black. And then I'll leave it just like that. Now I want to make the leather top of this. I'm going to use the polygon textures that I showed you previously. So let's just add a new material to this too. And then find the files where you downloaded it. Then I want to select a color map. You have these three options. I'm going to use the middle one, which is the darkest of the three. And then I'm going to connect the color to the base color. Just like that. Now I want to add the maps. But before we can do that, we need to unwrap this mesh. So go into edit mode and press A to select all of the vertices. Right click and UV unwrap faces and then unwrap. And down here you can see how this unwrapped mesh looks. Then we want to add the maps. So the first one we want to add is the normal map. So just drag that in and connect color to normal. But we want to add a vector first. So press shift A, vector normal map and drop it in between those two. And then make sure you change this to non-color. So this would work on its own, but luckily we have a bump map as well, which will give us a lot more realism. So I want to drag that in, then press Shift A, Vector and Bump. 
and then we want to change this a little bit so we want to connect the color to the height and then we want to drag this normal to the bump normal instead and then the normal of the bump to the normal of the principal shader and then if I zoom in you will see that we have a very rough surface now so let's change the strength and then drag this down until it's not that rough anymore but just a nice leather feel just like that and then we also want to add the glossy map so let's scroll down and grab the gloss map drag it in and connect the color to the roughness but since blender defaults to roughness and not gloss we need to add an invert modifier so shift a and just search invert and drop it in between those two and there we go that's the leather texture and that's all we need for this boss tool i'm going to stop the video now since it has been going on for a while and then in the next video we will do the rest of the setup and the textures of the table and the floor etc so then i'll see you next week for that thank you so much for watching this tutorial Next week, we're going to do the rest of the setup and create the whole scene. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe to my channel and leave a comment down below.